Yeah, good morning students. Uh, this is K.V. Ramesh, Anthropology faculty. And today uh, we are going to see on the session, so how to score more than 300 marks in anthropology. So some people scoring more than 300, even some people crossing 320, 330 also. So why it is possible for only few individual, though the question paper is the same, and the most of the time they are, they are also following the same kind of sources of anthropology. So here the secret lies the answer writing. So the presentation, the examples you are quoting, there are many factors so which made them to get more score when compared to other people. So our session is how to score more than 300 marks in anthropology for say 320 also possible. So after this uh, tips and the secrets revealed, then we will go to the looking at topper's copy and his name is Pawan Datta. He wrote anthropology tests when I was in Hyderabad. So his copies also I will show to you how he followed my inputs and how he made into that rank. So first of all, <coughs> so before going on to the session, I am informing you that so we are launched various courses and their starting dates. So anthro foundation course for freshers and beginners, we are going to start from June 15th, 2023. So anthro immediate mains goers test series, which we are going to conduct it from 18th June 2023 and anthro crash course those people who have no clarity on the subject so that we are introduced crash course that we are going to start it from 22nd June 2023 and anthro long term test series those people who are preparing for 2024 and they if they want to write so this is called chapter wise test series so here you will uh, nearly write 39 tests all the chapter wise tests are mini tests and uh, later you followed in the level 2 that sectional tests constitute 24, uh, 250 marks and finally you will write grant test. So these are all the various programs we are going to conduct for this year. And next one, yes, what are all the secrets those people who are getting more than 320 marks also. So the secret lies here. So they are somewhat different than the remaining people while it comes to the choosing of what kind of questions to be written in the exam. For suppose you can see that. So when it comes to selection of the questions, so there are certain areas which give more marks. They are in static in nature. So that the presentation is limited for that because there is no dynamism. The static portions always gives maximum marks for each question. And so along with the static portion, certain areas will give more score. This combination, which are all the areas give more score and combined with the static areas that they will pick up always to write in the exam. So while choosing that this kind of maximum score giving questions, so in the paper one, you should identify in paper one, you should follow this sequence. So sequence to get more than two, uh, 320 marks. So your preparation while preparing for the exam, your preparation or while making the notes or while writing the questions in the exam, you should follow these questions in the priority order because these order gives more marks rather than other order. So prehistory, it is most of the time purely static. So hardly you will encounter one or other inputs from the current affairs. That means purely static, prehistory, you will focus on dating methods, both absolute and relative dating methods. Every year you are getting question, as well as they give full marks for that question. And uh, cultural evolution ranging from, pre, uh, ranging from Paleolithic cultures to Iron Age. So these areas you should not miss if your aim is more than 320 marks. And uh, so next one is primatology. Here also you would expect every year question both short question as well as long question. So this question also purely static in nature and you will get more score from this chapter. And the next one is hominin evolution. Here too you are getting uh, two long questions or one short and one long question. So this is also extinct fossils. And here also purely static in nature. So you would get full marks. After that you should focus on genetic areas especially in between 9.1 to and 12th chapters. So that uh, 12th chapter comes under applications of physical anthropology. So these areas you should mandatorily write in the exam. And the last one, social institutions. So ranging from marriage to religion. Religion, that is 2.2 .2 marriage, 
uh, 2.3 uh, family and 2.3 kinship. So third chapter economic organization, fourth chapter political organization, fifth chapter religion. So these are social institutions question. After touching all these questions, you will choose social institution questions, theories and the field work relation. So if you follow this order, so prehistory, human evolution, primatology, genetics and applications of physical anthropology, they will give you full marks. So while choosing the questions in paper one, you should follow these orders. Then only you will get more than 320 marks. So when it comes to the paper two, so paper two, we have two sections. Section A, generally questions comes from Indian society and civilization along with Indian prehistory. So Indian prehistory and Indian society and civilization. So these areas and section B, so related to the tribal studies, so remaining vulnerable sections such as uh, SCs, OBCs, and tribal administration, tribal development, so tribal problems as well as national integration issues, compar uh, comparison of uh, nation states while it comes to the adaptation of tribes or adjustment of the tribes in their political organization. So this is the way various topics which deals about uh, tribes, SC, ST, OBCs. This is section B. So you can pick up tribes question, tribal, tribal portion, SC, ST, uh, ST portion and OBC portion. But there are some gray areas. First of all, the section A, mostly Indian society and civilization and Indian prehistory. These questions mandatorily you have to pick to get at least uh, 160 marks in paper 2. So if your aim is to cross 160 marks in paper 2, the order you should pick up the question is Indian prehistory questions. So even uh, it is Indian Paleolithic to Indian Iron Age that you should not miss this question writing in the exam because they give highest marks. So and Indian fossils in the form of Ramapithecus, Sivapithecus as well as Narmada man. From these three fossils every year we are getting one question that concept is very easy as well as you will get full marks. And Indian society and civilization studies here it includes demographic profile of India, traditional Indian society, caste system, LP with their the contribution in the form of nature man, uh, spirit complex, sacred complex and various uh, indigenous and exogenous religions impact on traditional Indian society. So rural studies and minorities in India, social change process in India in the form of exogenous and indigenous such as Sanskritization, Westernization, Modernization, Panchayatiras, Media. So these areas if you attempt more number of questions, so you would get easily 160 above in paper 2. And whatever the mandatory questions are there, so like uh, fifth question in section B, and one of the 50 marker question. So you minimize attempting the questions from the section B, and the maximum number of questions you should attempt from the, so these section A areas. And uh, so some of the limiting areas, if you touch some of the concept in paper 2, so these questions are open-ended questions. So the to satisfy this uh, exam evaluator, it is much difficult. So what are all those areas means? So you can see that ninth chapter in the paper two, which mostly discuss about national integration issues such as regionalism, communalism, secularism, as well as ethnic movements, so political movements. So these kind of questions are open-ended. So satisfying the demand of that question. So even how many case studies you will include, the marks you will get here is very less. And later on, anthropological contributions of rural and tribal development. So those questions are tempting in nature because it seems to be easy. But writing this one, you need too much of expertise. So here getting marks is very difficult when compared to the remaining static portions. So tribe, uh, tribe uh, na uh, you know, uh, na nation states and the tribal adjustment in that nation states. So these kind of uh, comparison also difficult to get more number of score. So you should minimize the attempting number of questions from these areas and focus on these areas to get 160 marks. If you follow this order, you will get 160 marks here and 160 marks there. Overall 320 marks, you could easily get it. So this is all the regarding your preparation, the sequence to be followed and choosing the questions in the exam that we are talking till now. So now, once you, you pick up particular question, and remaining people also do the same, but how do you make your question in Q? How do you impress that evaluator to give you more marks compared to other people? 
See, for the same questions are written by the many number of people, but one or two people getting the highest marks. So, there they follow different approach, so different kind of methods. So that, I will tell you that simple secrets. So first you can see that whenever, uh, once you uh, choose a particular question, so you should break down or identify the keywords present in the question and your answer should not go beyond these keywords. So once you identify the keywords in that uh, selected question, so you need to identify relationship between the keywords and uh, defining the each keyword in author's prospective rather than generic in nature. If you write definitions your own way, you will get less marks. That means wherever you define particular keywords in the question, it should be in the author's perspective and where they define this kind of things. So where uh, the kind of books they wrote for say, if you take that definition of the culture, so E.B. Taylor, he wrote this, uh, his opinion or his definition regarding the culture in a primitive culture group. So these kind of texts or books or any monographs or whatever the work they did it. So from where uh, we, we are taking that definition, so that you should write and you should underline this one. So these are all the tips followed by Pawan Datta and he got 22nd rank. So I will show you his uh, copies also, how he followed all my instructions. And next one is relationship between keywords. For say, so in the animism and de uh, deep ecology, this is the one of the question. So you identified that deep ecology is one keyword and animism is another keyword. So here simply I will tell how most of the people doing mistakes. So simply they start with animism and they write it whatever know regarding this animism and next they will enter into the so deep ecology and they simply they write whatever know about the deep ecology. So this is not the intention of the examiner. So what he is expecting is what is the relationship between animism and deep ecology? What are all the similarities and the differences? That relationship we have to focus rather than showing them as a independent and putting whatever knowledge you have. So those people who try to establish the relationship in the form of similarities and differences, they would get more marks. So the same question attempted with other people, they will get less mark. But if you follow the exact meaning or exact intention of the examiner, you will get more marks. So now after that, in every question you try to introduce some rough diagrams, flow charts and maps. So this rough diagram, flow charts and maps, they minimize your efforts of writing lengthy answers. For say, if you are describing a phenomena, put like a map, describe each point. So this is enough, the simple flow chart. It informs that, uh, that evaluator, I could know more, uh, see I know that more content for this concept because of space availability, time uh, positive, I am putting so professionally whatever I know. So this is the way, maximum content we can embedded in the form of flow charts and maps for say the distribution of tribal people in India. If you list out one by one tribe and corresponding states, it is difficult to examine or to get impression. If you take that map, so Indian map, so in this map if I identify that this tribe is residing here, so it gives the beautification of the answer and you will reduce that time. So that is why the rough diagrams, especially while you are describing home in India evolution, you should, you should uh, present rough diagrams in the form of skulls, so whatever the anatomy, total anatomy, everything. So this gives you extra one marks. So following this one, you will get uh, more time to attempt remaining questions and you can embed more content in the form of these three. So next one, best case studies. So whatever the case studies you will encounter, case study means if a particular sociocultural practice is followed by a tribe, you should describe that, why they are practicing. So these kind of things, like uh, any uh, displacement issues are there. So what kind of dams displaced more number of tribal people? So which tribe it is, which uh, that uh, tribe was studied by, who, when it was happened, that, that the reasons where they went after that displacement. So that way, what, but see it happened for many tribes. But by picking single tribe, explaining in detail regarding that impacts of displacements, so that you will get more score. So but here, so that uh, the displacement of the tribal people, it has been done since the independence time. So if you put data 
regarding 1960s, 1970s case studies. So it, 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 is, uh, it is not the, such a good impression. So if you take that recent displacement and impactments, such as Polavaram Dam and uh, these kind of another, uh, another dams which are recently constructed, it will give you, uh, it will give that evaluator the impression this person has regular updates, is following what is happening around the world. So this is the best case studies. You can quote whatever available in the books. Apart from that, you can gather it from the recent newspaper issues or uh, facts which present in the news. So if you feel that this is the difficult for you, you don't worry, I am publishing monthly current affairs magazine. So monthly current affairs magazine, uh, that is monthly anthropology current affairs magazine, whatever the issues which is related to the anthropology in a particular month. So that you will get in the, in the form of anthropology monthly magazine. So there you can get number of case studies and the conventional books also providing so many case studies. If you want more case studies, so you can visit our blog, KV Ramesh Anthropology. That is the website is there. There you will get lot of tribes and the case studies related to each and every concept. So next one is interlinking paper one and paper two. So many people, they are asking, asking me, sir, is it good to include Indian tribes in paper one? Yes, India is also part of the world. So Indian case studies you can include in paper one as well as in paper two also, you can use some of the concepts which are all present in paper one into the paper two. So that means you don't need to worry. So it is the best practice of writing, interlinking paper two issues in paper one, paper one issues in paper two. So rankers generally follow this kind of interlinking and interlinking the different branches. For say, while we are studying biological anthropology, how sociocultural practices are most influencing. While we are studying sociocultural practices, how biological things are impacting their sociocultural anthropology. The simple example you can take, the imbalance of sex ratio. That is the biological thing. So because it is associated with fertility concept. Right? So in this concept, so what kind of sociocultural responses for this biological oriented fertility concept is the polyandry, polygyny, monogamy. So there are various cultural practices are there. So even you can take uh, menarche, menopause, natality, mortality. So these are all the concepts are influenced by sociocultural anthropology. So vice versa. So biological concepts you can interlink in sociocultural anthropology, sociocultural concepts you can interlink in biological anthropology. So there your answers make unique you. So next one is while you are writing prehistory questions. So various hypotheses that is environmental determinism, cultural determinism and any other hypotheses are there that you should including while writing the pastoral economy, articles economy, fishing economy, this, uh, these are all hunting and gathering economies. So next one is you should including, so generally prehistory means most of the students what they are doing is describe, uh, so they include generally sites. So they forget about who, dug, uh, who uh, dug that site. So why they dug that site? What is the ecology associated with that site in prehistoric time? So what kind of socio-cultural, that is social behavior, economic behavior, political behavior and religious behavior of that particular site people, that you should including. So along with the sites and the evidences they found and the various people opinion regarding that one. For say, if you take that hunting and gathering society, some anthropologists believed that hunters and gatherers were, uh, they felt most of the time, uh, they, they face most of the time shortage of the food. But other anthropologists disagreed that view. They said that they are self-sufficient people. So they never had any kind of scarcity of the food. So this is a different people opinion while we are writing Paleolithic people, Mesolithic people, or Chal uh, Chalcolithic people. This is the way we should including different people opinion in prehistoric questions, sites and their uh, evidences which are available from that sites. And uh, this is first you can take. So middle Paleolithic or upper Paleolithic or Mesolithic. So we are talking, it is the one of the point of time. The societies were existed. Society means it is not about simply describing the material things. Society means the rituals were there, religious symbols were there, as well as uh, political organizations were, uh, as well as kinship relationship, social, re many things are there. So all these things holistically you should bring into the prehistoric questions. Then you will get good marks. And when it comes to the debates, so the most prominent debates like 
formalism, substantialism debate, as well as universality of the marriage, that kind of debate, universality of the family, that debate. And when it comes to the Negrito elements in India, so that debate, there are many debates you will encounter in sociocultural anthropology, biological anthropology, so for say, nature-nurture debate in biological anthropology. There are so many debates. So while writing the debates, you don't, you should, uh, you know, strictly restrict for the supporting groups. You can divide that answer into supporting groups, both supporting the trite and opposing trites. On what ground they are supporting, on what ground they are opposing. So the debate should be in the form of table or clearly identified the trites. So the trites should be, the core issues should be written and how each one is supporting and opposing the trites and a balanced conclusion you should write. So if you follow all these tips, you just imagine, if you follow all these tips, what could happen means, so overall, so overall you can see that 19 questions per, from paper 1 and 19 questions from paper 2. So overall you should write 38 questions in your anthropology. So if you follow simple this kind of tricks, you will get one marks extra for each question. So each question, you would get one marks extra than the rest of the people. That means you are far beyond 38 marks than the remaining people. So now you came to know why some other people are crossing 323. That means they have different uh, presentation skills when it comes to the answer. So you should remember all these things. So this is the way how you will get more marks in anthropology. So now, so I, I told you I will show the Pavandatta Kabis whether he followed all these tips or not. So now I will open his ranks. So this is the test number one, he wrote it. So this is my institution when I was in Hyderabad. So, but right now I am associated with in Lukman in Delhi. And uh, offline and online I am teaching it from Lukman. So now you can see that this was the questions, uh, tests wrote by Pawan Datta and you can see here. So this is the test on 2.1 and 2.2. That is the basic chapters of social cultural anthropology. So this is called chapter wise test series. So in each chapter you will get uh, six questions. So all the uh, long, short answer questions, medium answer questions, long answer questions, I will give in section A and section B. So section A you can see here, so three medium answer questions and 45 marks. And section B, you can see that 20 marker questions, those are all 60. The time duration for this test is 90 minutes, I think. 90 minutes or 120 minutes. So 90 minutes. So this is called chapter-wise test series. Like every chapter in anthropology syllabus, you will write like this one. By going this one, you will write each and every concept present in anthropology. So I will evaluate one to one and I will make your answer scripts are unique when compared to other people. So that's why rankers are produced. The same anthropology, but different people who blessed with good mentors, they will get best marks and best rankers. So here you can see that. So this is the first question, is answers you can see that. So he wrote this test on uh, June 10th, 2020. So, afternoon session he wrote it. So, here you can see that you should including authors and their texts. They should be underlined. So, he did the same kind of thing. So, wherever, I will go generally line by line correction. So, wherever it is the habits acquired by man as a member of society. So, here he wrote like achieved. But immediately I will correct it. Whatever the things are there. So, once you got familiarity of correction and once you got that what should be written in the exam. So it is easier to write all the chapters and the framework is repetitively present in your brain and you will easily write the same, you will stick for the same format. That's why you will get a good score. So this is putting authors, underlining where, what are the keywords. So definitions, you can see the underlying keyword. So Richard Park, chimpanzees, underlining. So here case studies, so many case studies are there present in my website. So this is the one of the test. So here you can see that. So once I, uh, I did correction, so I will give all the inputs. So like in the form of, so he was, during the COVID time, he was joined uh, as an online student. So uh, I corrected one-to-one -one evaluation for him. 
So this is the way we will write for every uh, inputs of each question. So here the primary focus is making every question is unique by adding more and more inputs. That's why they will get more score. So society and culture. So you should including uh, underlining that concepts, underlining that keywords, putting more authors, so their works and books. So these are all the things. General I will go line by line evaluation. So this is the first test. So now we will see another test. So this is a test on marriage chapter. So 15 marker questions in section A, 20 marker questions in section B. So this is the how we should put all the examples and everything. So this is the test number two, long answers. So I will go generally. So universal, you can see that. Every minute details also I will verify. So notes on queries, definitions. So the clear definitions and underlining that person. So here you can see that flow charts. Flow chart reduces the time of writing that entire information. So it simply gives beautification of the answer as well as we can put as much as dimensions of the concept. So agenda, new year's case studies are there. So underlining. So this is the second test you can see. So the space also beautifully how he wrote you can see. So there is a so minimum space between one line to another line. The writing, uh, uh, handwritten writing also very important here. So contemporary relevance, boxing that one, underlining that one. So relationships, so marriage rules. So see here how he wrote that diagram. So putting that flow chart, the theories, everything. So we can sum up. If you write all these theories in descriptive format one after another, it will take three to four pages. By simply telling that I know everything because of not available of space and time, I am uh, simply putting in the flow chart. That is why we will get more, more score. So this is the second chapter. So, so we have more than 20 pages for this chapter. 21 pages are there for this chapter. And third chapter. So this is called family chapter. So here whatever the question I am giving in this mini tests as well as sectional tests and grand tests. So those questions only automatically comes in the final exam. So since 2021 whatever the questions uh, UPSC uh, giving in the final exam. Every question is present in my material as well as my website also. So modern change. So this question I gave it in 2021. It came directly as it is they, gave, they asked in the exam. So Morgan evaluation of marriage forms. So here you can see that. So this is the family chapter. He wrote underlined everything. So flow charts, household differentiation. So small or large correction. Every line I will go, whatever the small issue also I will do. So this is the comparison. So I told you relationship between uh, if two or more contradictory issues are there, we should compare those things. Here you can see it is a family that is one type of institution, household is another type of institution and domestic group is a uh, different institution. So because of this one, we should write what are all the similarities and differences between this one. Rather than if you put family and you will write whatever information you know regarding family. And if next one, if you take that another paragraph regarding household and putting that third one is domestic group, it seems that you don't have clarity on the concept. So the giving family, household and domestic group means it is compare and contrast between these three dis uh, 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 distinguishable institutions. That is the intention of the examiner. So this is the family chapter. So this is the kinship chapter. So test number four and uh, he wrote in uh, 14th, I think. So he wrote all these things during the COVID time. So everybody went to their home and uh, they joined in the form of online test series. So here, so I will see each and every line, flow charts, diagrams, So this is the contra compare and contrast the lineage and clan side by side. 
so stable segmentary lines so mostly so this is the way i will give inputs where, wherever subject diff sheet is there i will give so many inputs thereby i will correct that concept as well as give so many inputs so these are all the inputs another chapter so you will see every page i will see i will give so many inputs so diagrams flow charts so this is another chapter on economic organization so section a section b so this is the hyderabad ashokanagar so economic or long answers food collectors and food producers so this is one to one corrections i did uh, in hyderabad so this is the different kind of problems faced by hunters and gatherers so ethnocide so this is the economic organization you will see that this test also has 30 pages and uh, this is a religious organization so it has 20 pages so witchcraft and sorcery religion as a social control explain the different religions among indian tribes role of totemism in primitive societies various anthropological approaches to study religion distinguish between religion magic and science so this is the this question also you can see that underlining underlining so case studies here you can see that case study and underlining that case study case study so for ajanda people he elaborated how that magic works in the ajanda people and how that magic and religion they could not able to differentiate in the uh, ajanda people so generally in the ajanda society so we could not distinguish between magic and religion they see that both are same and both used for positive purpose only so which craft and sorcery comparison so animism so this is a lot of so i think this session is uh, we took more time so this is all about some of the copies uh, written by pavan datta in when i was in hyderabad and he wrote all these tests under the name of kv ramesh anthropology institution that you can see that so this was the institution i ran in hyderabad kv ramesh anthropology institute so today i am uh, winding up uh, this session so tomorrow i will make another session so the session tomorrow i am going to make another session the session name is so tomorrow session name so most priorities level 1 preparation for immediate mains goers so level 1 preparation so most important chapters so most important chapters that you could not miss at all if you want to become a ranker most important chapters are there that everyone should finish at least and they should have notes also so level 2 chapters so here so very uh, least number of times questions are appearing so what are all those these, uh, what kind of chapters these are all and level 3 so which are all the chapters we should not study at all for exam there are only for knowledge giving chapters not relevant for the exam so this three kind of chapters from the whole syllabus of paper 1 and paper 2 i will make video uh, in next session so this is all about for today thank you very much